Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be reviewing the neutral cards. Uh, let's see here. We'll start with the wills, Wisp. Zero mana for a 1-1. One, one. This is an interesting creature because it's very useful in decks that rely on cards that are based off of um, play another card and something will happen. Like play another card and you'll get buff. Play another card and you'll draw a card. Play another card and um, uh, you'll summon a creature. So this is a great card to have in those kind of decks. Other than that, it's not a bad creature. Abusive Sergeant, a battle cry. Give a friendly minion plus two attack uh, this turn. This is an interesting card when combined with uh, any creature that you'll be able to attack with. Giving a plus two attack is quite useful. And then if you have other spells that will buff that attack again, you can uh, combine it to be quite deadly. Argent Squire, 1-1 uh, one, one with Divine Shield. This is a really good uh, low-level creature because it has Divine Shield, meaning it's really hard to kill um, as a level 1 creature. Blood Sail, oh sorry, that's a rare. Ah, Elven Archer, Elven Archer, 1-1 one, one that deals 1 damage when, uh, when it's summoned into play. This is a really good card to kind of hold on into your hand when you need to be able to do that extra little bit of 1 damage to a minion to kill it or uh, 1 damage to a player to kill them or you can use it to trigger buffs. There are many many creatures out there that will trigger when they are damaged either buffing themselves, enraging, or um, allowing you to draw cards. So this is a great card in combination with those kind of things. Goldshire Footman. Goldshire Footman is your basic uh, level 1 tank. Uh, where For 1 mana, for a 1-2 that has taunt, this will block uh, most of the basic minions that are in the game. Grimscale Oracle. This is the one of the key cards in a Murloc Rush deck. Uh, you'll want to hold on to these cards in your hand until you have a few Murlocs in play, or when you play a rushing Murloc, uh, or something like that. So it's good to kind of hold these in your hand until you have a, a few Murlocs in play already. Leper Gnome. De Death Rattle. Deal 2 damage. This is one of those interesting cards that no matter what it does in play, it will usually do its damage unless someone silences it. So it's a really good card to have for 1 mana cost. Murloc Raider. Murloc Raider is also part of the uh, Murloc Rush deck. Usually most people will have these um, in their hand and play them uh, in combination with like um, uh, Murloc Tidecaller. Uh, Shield Bearer. Shield Bearer is probably the best uh, level uh, 1 mana tank that's in the game so far, at least so far from what I've seen. One mana for a zero four. It's able to stop pretty much everything that comes down on turn one, and usually survive the attack. South Seas Death Deck Hand. This is an interesting card to have, especially if you're running a weapon deck. Uh, being able to charge when you have a weapon equipped make this card uh, relatively useful. But uh, on minimum, you'll be playing this card either on turn two or three depending on what uh, cards you already have in your hand. Stone Tusk Boar, a one mana for a one one charge beast. This is a great card to have especially in a hunter deck uh, who is relying on beasts. But other than that it's a pretty decent card to have in some other decks as well. Voodoo Doctor, uh, a 1-2-1 one, one that restores 2 hit points. This is a really interesting card to have in decks that are reliant on healing, either healing yourself or healing minions. Um, you can keep a minion alive for quite a bit of time with this card. Sorry, it's a bit early so I'm yawning there. Sorry about that. Oregon and Infiltrator. Um, uh, one two one with stealth, meaning uh, stealth provide makes it so that enemies can't target it um, until it actually attacks. So it's a pretty decent card to actually have down on first play because you can attack the player without worrying about being killed on uh, on their turn. Young Dragon Hark. This is a one one with wind fury. This is a really good card to have either in a hunter deck or in a um, a buff deck where you're trying to buff uh, creatures to kill the enemy. 
Acid Swamp Ooze. This is your basic card that destroys weapons. Most decks have probably one of these. Just take care of any weapons that are out there. Amani Berserker. Amani Berserker is um, your baseline rage card. Uh, it's a 2, 2, 3, uh, and if it takes any damage, it turns gets plus 3 to attack. This is really good in any sort of deck where... Um, you have some damage. You you can provide some damage, like either a mage deck or something like or a warrior deck or whatnot. So it can become quite an interesting combination with certain uh, certain aspects. Bloodfin Raptor. This is another good card to have in a in a hunter deck um, or any other deck that uh, you know you're looking for a particular card. Uh, being a two mana for a three two, it's a really decent card for its uh, for its mana cost. A Blood Sail Raider, uh, a 2 3 that gains the uh, attack of your weapon. Now, I did discover that does not, not uh, get affected by um, some spells that power up your weapon, so this will not work on, um, like, if you have a warrior and you have a weapon out and you use Heroic Strike or Heroic. Yeah, I think it's called Heroic Strike. It doesn't work with that. But it does work with the Rogue's... Um, uh, Deadly Poison. Uh, sorry, I was f f forgetting the name of the card there. So you can use it to that. I'm thinking it might also combine with some other cards, but I'm not sure yet. I haven't tested it out yet. Bluegill Warrior, the Murloc that charges. This is a really good card to have in any Murloc deck or any deck that's based on charging, since it's a low cost charger. Direwolf Alpha. Direwolf Alpha is a great card in combination with low attack cards uh, or any spells that summon creatures that have like no attack power. Fairy Dragon. Fairy Dragon is a very good uh, card for its casting. It's a 3-2 that cannot be targeted by spells or hero powers. Now with that said, you can still be targeted by um, hero weapons. So for instance, the Druid's um, uh, attack as well as the Rogue's Dagger will still attack it. Sroth, uh Frost Wolf Grunt is your standard uh, level 2 tank. 2 2 2 taunt stops basic monsters. I don't find it's really great for its um, for its ability, but if you have some sort of buff cards, I'm sure it'll make it even more powerful. Iron Break Owl. Silence is a very powerful card in this game, and usually I recommend having one or two silences in most decks. Um, having the Iron, uh, Iron Break Owl, Owl is a really cheap silence card. Um, it's a little underwhelming for a summon being only a 2-1, but silence is very powerful in this game. Kobold Geomancer. This is probably your, uh, one of the lowest cost um, some uh, spell damage spell uh, cards out there. There's a few others that are. There, I think there's one other that might be cheaper, but it is a rare or something like that. So it's a little bit harder to get. But this is a really good uh, base card for um, increasing your spell damage in a spell damage deck. So you want to have, especially in your, if you're in a spell damage deck, you want to have at least one or two of these in your deck. And I have a sip of water here. My throat's a bit dry. Sorry. Loot Hoarder, Death Rattle, draw a card. This is a, um, a great secondary card to have in a deck that requires a lot of drawing. Um, I usually recommend having a lot of drawing in most decks because I find most decks fail because they didn't draw enough cards. If you've drawn out your entire deck and you've killed the opponent, you win. If you haven't drawn out your entire deck and you lost, then you weren't playing good enough, I think. Or if you've drawn out your deck too fast and you've lost, then it probably means you might have too many draw cards and not enough damage cards. That can be a bit tricky too. <laughs> Mad Bomber. 
It's a 3-2 that deals 3 damage randomly split among all characters. That's including yourself. This card has been my bane. I try not to put this card in any of my decks because it has always, almost always randomly selected me now I've seen many players successfully use it and because it is random so there's a chance of it actually being quite good um, so it's really up to you if you have luck with it great if you don't have luck with it I would not recommend using it then Murloc Tidehunter. Murloc Tidehunter is another base card for a Murloc deck because it summons two Murlocs for a really low cost Novice Engineer. Novice Engineer is another one of those basic uh, drawing card cards. Uh, I usually almost always recommend having uh, one of these in your deck or even both of them in your deck. River Crocker List. This is a good beast to have in a Hunter deck if you find that your other minions that have a little bit less hit points keep getting killed. Um, so this is a pretty decent card, and if you have any sort of buffs, it makes it even more, uh, more, more decent. Youthful Brewmaster. Youthful Brewmaster is an interesting card. Uh, it's battle cry is return a friendly minion to the battlefield. This is great if you want to return another creature that has a good battle cry, or um, if you want to return a creature who has charge, so you can drop it and charge again, or um, you just want to return a wounded creature. So it's a really decent card to have in your deck. Acolyte of Pain. This is one of those minions that trigger off damage. Uh, whenever this thing takes damage, it draws a card. So if you have a lot of uh, low level cost damaging spells, playing it on this creature will make it so you can draw all the way up to three different cards. <clears throat> Dalaran Mage. Dalaran Mage is another one of those low cost spell um, made uh, cards out there. The only negative to it is it has very low damage, so you want to have something that will increase its damage just so it like, becomes a little bit more useful. But it has really good hit points, meaning it lasts a bit longer than some of the other cards out there. Hmm. <clears throat> Earthen Ring Forseer. Earthen Ring Forseer is a 3-3 that heals you for 3. Um, in any sort of deck where you want to keep yourself alive a little bit longer, or you want to heal a minion, or you're based on healing powers and stuff, this is a good card to have in your deck. Flesh Eating Ghoul. This is an interesting card that whenever a minion dies, it gains plus 1 attack. This is including all minions on your opponent's side and your side. So if you can combine this with some sort of massive destruction card on their side, you can really pump this up, this thing up quite powerful. The only negative to it, it has low hit points. So you want to increase its hit points as soon as you can, either with buffs or spells or anything to keep it alive. Harvest Golem. Harvest Golem. Um, is one of those very annoying cards that a lot of players hate because its death rattle summons another creature. Um, it's really hard to deal with because its hit points is relatively decent for its summoning cost, meaning there's only a few cards that will be able to take it out the moment it's summoned. Iron Forge Rifleman. Iron Forge Rifleman is a 2 2 that deals 1 damage when it comes into play. It is a little bit low, I find. Um, card wise it's only a 2-2 two, two. if it had a little bit more hit points it'd be a little bit more of a decent card I think but it is a decent card if you need that extra one damage to take something out Iron for Grizzly this is a 3-3 three, three with taunt um, this is really good in any sort of beast deck or if you just need that uh, medium level tank to stop some of the enemies out there Jungle Panther. This is a 4-2 with stealth. Um, very useful in decks where you're just trying to keep a card out there just to deal extra damage to an enemy player or um, or want to take out that um, that minion without dying. Magma Rager. Magma Rager is a really powerful card if used correctly. It is a 5-1, um, but it doesn't have any special abilities on it, so it can be killed rather quickly. So you want to have something that either protects it to keep it alive for that one turn so you can attack with the next turn, or you want to uh, have charge on it, meaning you can deal that damage almost directly. Raging Wargan. 
three 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 with enrage that gives it wind fury and plus one attack this is a pretty powerful card when used uh, correctly it does get taken out rather quickly though because players don't like this card <laughs> Raid Leader. All your other minions get plus one attack. This is a very good card, except for the fact that it doesn't have uh, high hit points. So you want something that will keep it alive a little bit longer than its regular uh, one turn and it dies. Razor Fin Hunter. Razor Fin Hunter is an interesting card. Uh, it summons a 1 1 boar. Now, the 1 1 boar is a beast. So this is decent in a hunter deck that, needs, wants, that wants a little bit of extra beast out there. Um, so remember that hunters it's it's boar is a beast scarlet crusader a 3 one with divine shield this is a very annoying card for many players because of its divine shield and it has three attack meaning you take out a lot of creatures at its same level base shadow sun cleric shadow sun cleric it recently got a nerf to bring its hit points down to only a two instead of a three and i think this this nerf was needed because i find this card is overplayed almost every deck has it out there um and it is pretty powerful giving him giving a friendly mini plus one plus one um but i i have been finding that i can replace it with other cards that are better or at least more useful for that particular deck. Not necessarily better. I think almost all cards are roughly equal in, in performance. <sighs> Silverback Patriarch. It's a 3 summon for a 1-4 taunt. Um, this is a really good tank for its mana cost. It's only negative as its attack power is a little bit low. So you need something that will buff it a little bit. Turn, uh, Torn Warrior. It's a um, it has an rage of plus three and taunt, so you're guaranteed to get this thing attacked. But it has low hit points at three, meaning it's probably going to die relatively quickly. I usually recommend having any sort of heal card with it or a buff card that will increase its hit points. Thromir for Seer. Uh, it is a 2-3 with Wind Fury. Uh, this card can be quite deadly in some decks, especially if you're buffing it or uh, able to charge with it almost right away, plus buff it. Wolf Rider, 3-1 Charge. One of your basic charge cards out there. A uh, really good card uh, when combined with any sort of buffs or if you needed to take out a, a creature that ha a creature. Giving it Divine Shield makes it quite powerful. Giving it any sort of attack buff makes it so it can kill almost any creature. Um, and there's a few other cards that work really well with it, I find. Ancient Brewmaster. This is another one of those cards that returns a friendly creature. It has a little bit of a higher cost, but it is uh, it makes it up for its uh, attack power. It's being a 5-4. Chillwind Yeti. This is a really decent uh, monster card. It's a 4 for a 4-5, so it has a bit at higher average hit points, meaning it lasts a bit longer. Cruelty Master. Whenever one of your other creatures dies, draw a card. I find this card is a really good card when it comes with the right combinations. And other times, it is just a useless card to have. You really need to know when one of your creatures is going to die to make this card worthwhile. Also, because it has low hit points of only two hit points, definitely having some sort of buff to buff its hit points is a really good, uh, good option to keep it alive longer. Dark Iron Dwarf Battlecry, give the minion plus two attack. This dwarf is a really good card. Uh, because it's a 4-4 four four that gives plus two to something, it's almost a must-have in most decks, but it's only negative, I find, is you have to have a creature in play. So if you're facing a deck that's just wiping out your creatures left, right, and center, and you can't get anything down, this card is almost useless to have. Dragonling Mechanic. It summons a mechanical dragonling. Um, I'm not sure if the dragonling counts as a dragon or not, so if, I'm not sure if there's any cards that are triggered off dragons. But it is a decent uh, card uh, for its summoning cost. Dreadcourser. Dreadcourser is a really good in a weapon deck. 
It's it's mana cost is a little high for, but if you have any weapon in play, it will really make this card a bit more, a uh, bit better for you. Uh, it has low attack, 3-3, three, three, um, but if you reduce its mana cost to almost nothing because they have a really powerful weapon, it is definitely worth having in those kind of decks. Take another sip of water here. It's really dry this morning for some reason. No Mission Venture. Draw a card. Self-explanatory. I usually recommend having these cards in your deck uh, if you're able to have them in your deck. Um, it is a little bit of a high cost uh, uh, drawing card. Usually I find any any draw cards that start getting into the 4 plus category, I usually debate if I want them in my deck. But if you find you're playing a lot of uh, low to medium end cards, then these cards are really good to have, especially when you start getting to the uh, end of your deck where you have uh, your 10 mana or so, where you can just, all right, I can play this thing, draw a card, play another thing, so on and so forth. Mogushai Warden. Mogushai Warden is an interesting card. It's a 1-7 with Taunt. Uh, this is a really good card if you have something to buff its attack power. Or even its hit points if you want to keep it out longer. Uh, so it makes it quite very good tank in those uh, retrospects. Mm. Uh, the snap shot. The snap jaw. The snap jaw is a really good beast uh, card if you want something to buff to turn it into a tank. Combining this with the uh, the card that gives plus two plus two and, and taunt makes this card very powerful. Um, and with its hit points, it's really hard to deal with. Ogre Mage can't go wrong with this card in any sort of spell deck uh, because it's a four four uh, with plus one spell damage. It's really a decent card for its summoning cost. Uh, Sinjin Shield Master. Sinjin Shield Master is probably one of the best tanks in the game for its mana cost. Uh, it's a 4-5 uh, hit points with 3 attack, meaning it has a good balance of all of the stats out there. Silver Moon Guardian. This is another one of those Divine Shield cards that can be extremely annoying in, uh, in a lot of decks. A Divine Shield is a very powerful buff, uh, which is why it's only a 3-3 instead of a 4-4. Spellbreaker. Spellbreaker is another one of those cards that silences, so it's always good to have at least one silence in your deck or so. So having this card is um, is quite useful if you're looking for a silent uh, silent card. Stormwind Knight, uh, two five with charge. Um, this is a really good card if you want something uh, low cost that's going to take out. Um, a creature that has only two hit points. This creature seems to survive most enemy minions that only have two hit points because of the fact that it has five hit points. So it survives anything that's a 4-2, a 3-2, uh, obviously a 2-2, two -two, and a 1-2 quite easily. Unfortunately it won't survive a 5-2, but if you give it a little bit of buff it'll even survive those things. Yeah, Booty Bay Bodyguard. It's a 5-4 with Taunt. Um, it has a little bit of low hit points, but it makes it up for it in its attack. So this thing's able to take out most um, monsters out there that are on the field. Dark Sky Healer. This is one of the few cards out there that will actually heal all friendly creatures out there. This is great in combination with cards that are based off chilling off, triggering or off healing, either giving you more cards off healing or giving more attack power off healing or anything that bit triggers off healing. Fen Creeper. This is also a really good um, tank card. Uh, for, uh, 3, 6 for 5 mana. It has a little bit low attack, but makes it up for it in its uh, hit points. Frost Wolf Warlord. Frost Wolf Warlord is a really good card in any sort of deck that has at least one or more uh, friendly minions on the board. If you only have one minion on the board, this card is lackluster. You definitely want to have at least one or more creatures on the board to make this card worthwhile. Greybash Berserker. This is one of those 
uh, creatures that trigger off taking damage. So the more cards that have like doing it one or so damage will make its power quite powerful. Um, I've seen many decks use this card quite successfully and many decks that uh, kill it off as fast as they can. Nightblade, Valkyrie, deal 3 damage to an enemy heal hero. This is a really good card if you're looking at dealing a lot of quick damage to an enemy player. Um, it for its mana cost, it's decent. It's a 4-4, four, four, so it has a little bit low on, on um, hit points and attack, but it does do 3 damage to an enemy hero. Sorry, I'm yawning. Sorry about that. So you can take out um, quite a few enemy heroes with it. Uh, Silverhand Knight. Uh, this is a basic card for summoning. Uh, it is a little expensive at 5, but it does summon a 2 2 square, which lasts a bit longer than most cards. Spiteful Smith. Spiteful Smith is a really good card in any sort of weapon deck where you want to increase your weapon attack power. I'm thinking this might trigger other things that are based off weapon attack power, but I'm not 100% sure. I still have to test that. But I'm sure you could probably figure out quite a good combination. And because it has six hit points, it lasts a little bit longer than some of the other creatures that are in the play. Stormkite Commando. It has low attack and low hit points, but it does deal two damage when it gets summoned. So this is really good at taking out some of those minions who have uh, two hit points or whatnot. Stranglethorn Tiger, Stranglethorn Tiger, a 5-5-5 five, five, five with stealth. This is a really powerful card to have in any deck that's based off stealth. <clears throat> Ventro Mercenary, a 7-6 for 5 mana. This is probably one of the most powerful 5 summon cards out there. It does increase your minion cost by 3. But uh, you having this card out can be a headache for most players because it's really hard to deal with because of its high hit points. Archmage. A 4-7 with spell increase damage. Um, this is an interesting card to have. I find it's really good in low cost damaging spells. Uh, if you have a lot of low spells that cost um, uh, low damage, um, like, um, well, there's probably hundreds of examples of low cost, but anything that costs a, a very low amount of mana and combined with this card can be quite deadly. Um, Bold, Boulder Fist? Yeah, Boulder Fist Ogre is a really good uh, creature card. 6-7, uh, so it has more than average hit points for its summoning, so this is a really good high level creature to have. Frost Elemental, Battle Cry, Freeze a character, meaning you can freeze anything on the board, yours included, uh, which can be quite useful in any deck that requires something to be frozen. Lord of Arena, 6 5 Taunt. This is a really hard card to deal with just because of its high hit points and high damage. Priest of a Loom, um, Battle Cry, 4 health to a hero. This is a really good card if you find you, you are taking a lot of damage and you need something to heal you up a little bit before you attack. Reckless Rocketeer. Yeah, it has a high summoning cost. It's a 6 for a 5-2 uh, charger. Uh, but if, there's, if you have any low cost spells that buff it or do something to it, you can really take out a lot of uh, uh, enemies with this card. Wind Fury Harp. Wind Fury Harp is a really interesting creature. Uh, it's a pretty good Wind Fury card. It is a little bit high in cost, being six. Uh, but if you have any cards that give it charge, give it buffs, uh, you want to keep it alive for that one turn, so you can you can either decimate an enemy player or um, decimate almost entire field of monsters. Horehound. Gorehound is one of the most the strongest creatures in the game, being a 9 attack and 5 hit points. It hit points is a little low, but if you have anything that makes it charge or buffs its hit points, you can keep it alive quite a long time. Raven Holt Assassin. Oh wait, no, that's a rare. Sorry about that. I'm not gonna be doing rares with this particular review. Too many cards. <laughs> Stormwind Champion. Stormwind Champion is a 6-6 that gives all other minions plus 1 plus 1. 
This is a really good card to have in almost every single deck, but depending on the deck you're playing, um, you may or may not want this card. It's because of its high mana cost. War Golem, 7-7-7. Seven, seven, seven. Almost can't go all wrong with this card. It doesn't have any special powers, but it is really good for its mana cost. 7-7-7. Seven, seven, seven. Lucky number 7. And that's it for all the, the the basic cards and the common cards under the neutral creatures. I'll probably do at some point in time a review of all the rare uh, neutral cards as well as I'll start doing some of the more high uh, more uh, uncommon uh, let's see right here. the epic and the legendary cards at some point as well uh, th if you have any comments or questions feel free to post them and thank you again for watching